Now that I've tackled the electrical work back here for our trusty radiator heater, I've decided to start working on the portable washer, or in our case, actually the more permanent washer. So what I've done so far is I've taken off the rear access panel. Here's that panel for reference, just like that. And I'm trying to determine the best method to replace or lengthen this drain tube. So this drain tube is essentially where the water discharges from the washer two or three times per cycle. The issue is that right now this line is only six feet. So we actually can't even get the washer up where it's supposed to be in that area where the laundry bag is because this drain tube does not reach the sink. Now it does reach the floor of the bathroom and apologize, it's a little bit messy in there. <laughs> um, but the problem is that when that hose is on the ground, the water just comes straight from the washer, straight out the drain tube. So there actually has to be, the, the drain tube has to end at least 36 inches above the height of the ground. So that's why I can't just place the drain tube on the ground, let it go down into the shower some. So that leaves me with pretty much the only solution is either to lengthen, uh, basically get an extension tube, or to replace the tube um, whole. My plan is because I don't, I can't really find a tube that will, uh, or a um, coupling that will allow me to join this tube. Plus I don't really wanna have to worry about a coupling being a potential weak point um, once this is installed in the boat and I run this tubing through some of the um, paneling and potentially the flooring. I don't wanna have to worry about that um, uh, coupling. I guess it's kind of like a nipple. Um, basically to join the two tubes together. So what I'd like to do is actually fully replace this six foot tube with something that is um, a little bit more lengthy. So what I have here is, this is just some spare uh, reinforced tubing that I have laying around. Um, this is uh, one inch outer diameter and three quarter inch inner diameter. Based off of my measurements with this tube, it's kind of close to three-fourths. It's like, uh, I don't know. It's like it's, it's almost like nine-tenths or something, which is kind of weird. Um, it's a really weird inner diameter. But uh, it looks like we have, this is the essentially the pump unit that pumps out the water after it's been used. We have a right angle here, and then this screws into, or I, I should say the current drain tube kind of screws into that. So I'm going to try to re remove this right angle little tube um, in there and see if I can potentially get this on if I heat it with a heat gun, get it a little bit pliable, and then pop it on there with a hose clamp, um, I might be able to utilize this. Now this is only 10 feet. Ideally I'd probably need a little bit longer than 10 feet, um, but this might be a good stopgap for at least for us to get it up off the floor over there. That way it's not right here in the cabin where it's been for the past month or so, which is kind of a pain because we can't access the head from this angle. We have to go all the way back out in the saloon. So I'm gonna see if I can pop this puppy off. Looks like it's got a little, little clamp here um, and then uh, see what it looks like after that. Now, the first plan or project that I have planned for today is to continue to uh, build out the improvements of our washer system. So I do have the two new stainless steel cleats that I'm going to mount on the uh, platform there for the washer. This will allow me to uh, ensure that the washer does not tip um, port side or that way while underway. So I'm going to get those mounted down there. Uh, I also purchased a, a microfiber filter. Now, if you're not super familiar with plastic microfibers, they're basically really small pieces of plastic that um, come off from, uh, for the most part, it's usually like clothing, sheets, uh, any sort of synthetic fabrics. Now they also can uh, come from uh, other sources of plastic, such as if you were to like shred up a plastic bag and have those tiny little pieces of plastic. But um, a lot of them come from uh, when you're doing laundry. So especially um, on the boat here, since we don't pass the water through any sort of you know residential water treatment facility, all of our gray water just goes right overboard. 
And uh, plus that combined with the fact that we do have a decent amount of synthetic fabrics on the boat. You know, anything from such as uh, this blanket here to those socks, those are synthetic as well. That sheet right there is synthetic. Um, and a lot of those quick dry fabrics. So I found this company called Planet Care um, and they're based out of the European Union. And what they uh, do is they, they manufacture these filters. And you can see this is one of the filter cores here. And they're specifically designed to filter microplastics out of your laundry. From their website, they say that 35% of uh, all microfiber plastics that end up in the ocean actually come from laundry. So because our water goes straight into the Chesapeake, I really wanted to get something to ensure that we're you know, minimizing our environmental impact from a microplastics perspective. So my plan for today is to get um, this filter housing uh, mounted here on the back of the washer. And from there, what we're going to do is I'm going to replace the PVC tubing down there, um, which you can see that's what I installed uh, about maybe two weeks ago, um, and utilize this tubing that they uh, sent me that came with the um, with the kit and go from the outlet of that pump to the inlet on the filter and then from there I will then connect the outlet to the PVC hose and that will run to the sink as it always has and like I've mentioned previously eventually we're going to get a more per permanent um, draining solution that doesn't require us to run it to the sink every time. But this is kind of one step uh, in the in the right direction in uh, with many more steps to continue on. So uh, the cool thing about this is each of these filters lasts for about 20 wash cycles on a standard washer. But because this is such a small washer, I'm pretty sure we're going to be able to stretch that to maybe 40 or even 60 per cartridge. The cartridges uh, have a full um, recycle plan as well. So you actually uh, when you purchase it, you also are purchasing the prepaid shipping label to send it back in a closed loop recycling system where they actually take that, clean it, um, and repurpose the components uh, to create a new filter, which is then sent out to new customers. So kind of a pretty cool closed, closed loop recycling system. I bought this for uh, about $100 and um, did come from, I believe, uh, Slovenia, but it's been independently tested and all kinds of cool stuff. As you can see it says made in Italy there. Um, like I said, it comes from the EU and it came with uh, three filters, uh, this mounting bracket here, which is what I'm gonna mount it on on the back, um, this little tube, and then also some um, additional gaskets and such. Um, and also some of the um, gasket kind of grease. So that is the plan for today. Um, and I'll put a link to the uh, to this product um, in the description. Um, and of course, you know, I don't get any you know kickback or anything. I just think it's a cool, neat product to help keep our oceans clean from microplastics. And we are probably going to need the heat gun to get that open because that is pretty re-solidified after I heated it enough to get it stretched over the outlet there the first time around. Okay, we got the new hose on. This is the one that came directly with the kit. And now it's time to get the filter housing mounted up here, just like that. We have the filter housing now mounted. Now, unfortunately, there is a little bit of flex. You can see the wiggle there. Part of that is due to the plastic wall that it's mounted on, so you can see it kind of moving there. So I'm hoping this, this washer can vibrate at times. We'll see how this holds up. We might have to come up with a different method to adhere it to uh, the washer. And looking at it now and kind of feeling this and knowing this, <laughs> might have been better to mount it up here since this piece is a lot more sturdy. Um, and doesn't have a whole lot of flex to it like this piece down here. So we'll see how this works. Uh, worst case scenario, I'll have to take this off and then get some um, more of this double-sided um, adhesive and mount it up to uh, this point up here. I will um, connect the outlet up with that PVC and we'll give it a go. Okay, so we got the washer back up and I did run that outlet tube there into the sink. Now, unfortunately, the issue I ran into is that this is probably going to hit the uh, you can hear it hitting that piece of wood down there. So 
and it, I can assure you it's definitely going to do this. It's going to wiggle that much at least while it's spinning. So uh, short term, I'll keep it here, but definitely the long term solution is going to be to relocate the filter housing up top because once it's up top here, then it won't bang into the um, wooden shelf back there. So I just spent the last couple minutes thinking about where to mount the final cleats to secure the washer from going this way if I were to push it away from me right now. Originally I was thinking of mounting a cleat here and a cleat here and then running the line from the back from those mounting points in the back. However, I just realized that I actually could mount the cleat down underneath here. You can see it like that and that way I could run the lines to one cleat rather than having two. And plus it also frees up this space in the event that I wish to move the washer well, more forward or more aft, um, just in the event that it's not a permanent you know, final location for it. These would obviously impinge upon moving it aft or forward if they're right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some line, test out, see if this makes sense to mount it down here. And then if it does, I'm gonna go ahead and mount this cleat there and then that will ensure that we're secured from both a um, port and starboard uh, direction when we're underway. <laughs> the moment of truth and I realized I forgot to put the hose clamp on this of course <laughs> so I'm definitely gonna stay very close and listen for any issues well our first attempt did not go exactly according to plan unfortunately and I don't really know why they did not include the gasket actually connected in the filter housing so if we look back at the filter housing there's a gasket that goes in between the kind of the lid piece here and then the lower section of it and for whatever reason they didn't actually include the gasket inside there it came with the packaging but separate so I mean I guess I probably should have read the instruction manual but water kind of went pretty much absolutely everywhere down there and ran all down the back and unfortunately uh, you know the washers open which isn't good so that kind of sucked and the water all came rushing out down here as it goes went underneath the rear part of this platform and then down all through here and then under this floorboard. So, I mean, I caught it really quick, but um, I'm going to have to take this whole thing back down off again, take this panel up and let it air dry because I'm worried it'll get moldy down there um, if, we, if I keep it sealed up um, without opening it up to let it dry out. So, kind of sucks, but I put the gasket in this time, so... Um, and I just ran it running on a rapid setting, so should finish up a lot quicker than the full 45 minutes it usually takes. So we'll watch it this time, see what happens. Alrighty, work this time. No leakage. Any water down there just left over from previous water. Okay, so this is the final current status of the washing machine. So we ended up with, as previously shown, the cleat back there to tie down the mount points here and here. We now have the mounted filter. So this is the microfiber filter. And we finally have the cleat down here too. So they also tie down the washer so that it doesn't go port. So we pretty much, from at least a temporary perspective, are relatively set up. The final thing now that I do still do have to do is run more permanent lines for the water and for the drain. So for the time being, we still have those just going into the sink. <laughs> 